That's 30 second line. You can. Good morning, middle school, and welcome to the first ever uh, middle school online chapel. I think that's the way to say it. I say first because uh, you'll probably get an email this morning that we're going to go online for the rest of the school year. So I hope you guys are ready. Oh, I'm just kidding. That's an April Fool's joke. Don't don't tell your parents that, that. I'm just kidding. We're not going online. Lord willing, we're done after spring break. So. Uh, we're, we're, we're hoping to come back together and to see you guys and be with you again. Hope you guys are, are making it through the online uh, sessions and that your teachers are being generous with the workload they're giving you. Uh, I wanted to come and, and just do a quick chapel with you guys. I know you've got class coming up at 9 o'clock and so it's not, I'm not going to be too long. And as I thought about what I wanted to share, um, Easter's what came to mind. You, you may or may not know, next week is what we call Palm Sunday. Um, it's the day that we recognize as Jesus. Uh, if you remember, he rides into Jerusalem and the people line the streets and they're waving palm branches and they're crying out, Hosanna. Um, and then the following Sunday is Easter Sunday, the Sunday before we come back uh, from break, April 12th. And so I thought I would just go ahead and share with you uh, some thoughts about Easter. <clears throat> and before we do that, let me go ahead and pray with us and then, then we'll get into this. Father, we thank you for uh, your goodness and your grace to us. Uh, thank you for technology, Lord, that even though we're um, miles apart, we can uh, still gather together and hear your word and worship you. And so I pray this morning that you would do that. You would work in the hearts of each one of us. Uh, that you would remind us, Lord, of your goodness and your grace to us, even in the midst of, of troubling times. And Father, I pray that you would, uh, again, just be high and lifted up. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as we consider Easter, the, the verse that my mind went to was 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And in verses 3 through 8, if you have your Bible, you can turn there, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 8, or you could look on a device. The Apostle Paul says, For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, according to the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the Twelve. And after that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, Though some have fallen asleep, and he, he means that they've passed away, they're dead, they're no longer with us. Verse number seven, then he appeared to James, and then to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. <clears throat> and the first thing I want to mention is the historicity of the resurrection, right? Historicity is a fancy word for just saying the historical authenticity. Okay, how do we know that uh, the resurrection is a historical event. And look at, if you look at verse number six with me, look at what the Apostle Paul says. He says, more than 500 other brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living. 500 people at one time witnessed the resurrected body of Jesus. They saw Jesus after he had died and resurrected. Okay? And if you just think about that alone, 500. And, and by the way, Paul even says, you can go ask them. Okay, we have somewhere around 500 students in the whole school here at Taijong. Let's just say you missed a day, you were absent for a day, you didn't come. And you heard through the grapevine that something amazing happened, right? Mr. Owens levitated in the middle of the plaza and flew around the plaza, okay? Something just outlandishly wild. And you came to school the next day, you thought, oh, that's just a lie, it didn't happen. And you came to school the next day and everybody said, no, we saw it. Everybody was out there, he did it. Even the teachers were like, we saw it, we were there. Um, it, it was amazing. You would be foolish not to believe the whole school saw something and, and you, the one person who missed it, are the, doesn't believe it, right? If the whole school was telling you something happened, you would probably believe it because that would be the logical things to do. And, and that's what Paul's saying here. I mean, here are 500 eyewitnesses. We would be foolish 2,000 years removed to say, well, these guys, they didn't see what they thought they saw. 
they, they, they weren't, they, clearly they were all mistaken, right? It's just not even logical. We wouldn't process, you wouldn't come back from, to the school and say, well, all of you saw something you, you thought you saw something you didn't see. No, we would, we would accept that what they saw was accurate because of the number of eyewitnesses. And I think the same thing here with the resurrection. We have to consider the historicity from the standpoint, there are 500 uh, eyewitnesses, more than 500 eyewitnesses of this historical event that saw Jesus after he resurrected, okay? So that's, that's the first thing I want to share with you, the historicity. And then second, I want to share with you the assurances of the resurrection, okay? So let's say the resurrection happened. So what? Well, how does that affect me? What does it mean to me? And if you're a believer, okay, if you're a believer, there are assurances given throughout the scripture. In fact, all of the promises made in scripture are guaranteed because of the resurrection, okay? Let me show you this. Look at verse number 17 through 19 in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Paul says this, And if Christ has not been raised, okay, if it didn't happen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. And then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. So everybody who believed before us and died is, is lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. If my only hope uh, of the resurrection, if the resurrection didn't happen, and my only hope is here in this life, then what good is it? Right? It does me... It does me no good because as Christians, we're looking to for an eternal perspective. We don't live necessarily for today. Uh, we don't live for the pleasures of this life. We are considering eternity. We live in light of eternity, not in light of what can I get right now. That's what Paul's saying. But notice how Paul really has put all of his eggs in one basket. He is hanging the whole Christian faith. And when I say the Christian faith, I don't mean just after Jesus, I mean the whole Bible. Everything, everything that God has done throughout all of Scripture, Paul is hanging on the reality of the resurrection. If the resurrection didn't happen, Paul says, then everything is useless. The whole story is useless. Everything we believed, all the faith we put into, all the stories and the evidences, it's all worthless. Okay, so again, everything is hanging upon the reality of the resurrection because we understand that God from eternity past was moving everything towards that moment. Okay, uh, he was moving everything towards the redemption that we have through Christ. So notice some of these assurances. Number one, the death of death. Okay, and I'm going to put some scriptures up here. I may or may not talk about them. You can write them down. You guys should be taking notes. If you don't have your uh, notebook, you can take them on a Google Doc uh, and then share them with your teachers or show them later. But uh, again, write down the scripture reference and then you can look at it later uh, as you have time. So the death of death. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 54 uh, through 56, Paul talks about the reality that death has lost its sting. You know what? As a believer who trusts in the resurrection of Christ, I don't have to fear death. I don't fear dying because I know that after death there is, there is more. That I too will be resurrected. Right? That's what Paul's arguing. That if Christ rose, so will we. And so death no longer is something that that makes me afraid of. There's a virus and a pandemic, an epidemic that's spreading around the world and, and tragically people are losing their lives. As a believer, we don't have to fear that. We understand that God's in control uh, of even a virus and we understand that even if, even if I am overcome by that virus uh, and I pass away, that I too will be resurrected just like Christ. So there's the death of death. Number two, uh, we, there's the assurance that God will judge every sin committed by me or us and against us. Uh, you know, one of the, the things is, is that as believers, uh, we, don't, we, don't, we shouldn't feel like we have to uh, uh, get revenge on an individual, right? I've talked about this with my Bible class, and maybe I've talked about it in chapel before, but um, oftentimes when we fight or quarrel, quarrel with other people, it's from a standpoint that we feel like we've been wronged and we need to make that wrong right, 
right? That justice needs to be done and we need to execute that. So-and-so has hurt me and now I need to try to hurt them so that they understand what they've done to me. But as a believer, I can trust that God is going to make those wrongs right. I don't have to. And so those moments where I feel like I need to you know, engage somebody to try to get revenge or get justice, I can just let those go and just trust that God's going to do it. Um, so we have uh, the death of death, and we have the reality, the assurance that God will judge every sin, mine and uh, those committed against me. And God judging my sin was done through Jesus on the cross. Okay. Number three, God can deliver you from the power of sin. We call this sanctification. Maybe that's a word you've heard in Bible class or maybe in chapel. Uh, sanctification, okay, the process of becoming more like Christ. So one of the assurances of the resurrection is God will deliver me from the power of sin. You know, I still struggle with sin. Uh, I've been a believer now for 20 years. There's still sins that I struggle with that I struggled with 20 years ago. But my prayer and my hope is that God will one day deliver me from those sins. That the power that it has over me will one day be relinquished. Uh, some of those, some of the sins I struggled with, uh, the power of them went away immediately. The moment I confessed my sins, repented, and uh, decided to follow after the Lord, the power of those sins were gone right away. I no longer struggled with them. Some of them were a little bit harder to rid, and some have been very difficult. But it's not through my power, it's through God in me. And my prayer and my assurance from the scripture is that God will deliver me from the power of that sin. We see that in Romans 6, 14. For sin shall no longer be your master, because you're not under the law, but under grace. Okay, So uh, that's three assurances. Number four, uh, God will restore and renew everything that is broken. Uh, again, to reference the current situation the world is in, we see something as small as a virus. I mean, something so microscopic can cause so much um, devastation, not just to people's health, but to people's lives. People are quarantined, they're shut in, they're isolated. Um, people's jobs, people around the world are losing their jobs because their businesses, they, they can't go to work and then their businesses can't afford to keep paying them. Uh, e the economies of countries are falling. I mean, if you just listen to it, it just seems like one thing after another, right? And what is what should be evident to us is something's broken, something's not right. This is not the way uh, God created it to be, right? God created it and it was perfect in the garden. That's, that's how everything should have been. But sin came in, broke uh, the perfectness of God's creation. And that sin curse fell upon all of creation. And so we see even our bodies can't fight off. Even the virus itself is something that probably is, a, is an, a, 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 an effect of the, the sin curse, right? Before that, before sin entered in, would there have been something like a virus to destroy things? I, I don't think so. It doesn't seem like that would fit uh, the context of Scripture. So it's evident to us, it should be evident to us that something is broken, something's not right. And yet we can trust, uh, because of passages like Acts 3, 19 through 21, that God is going to restore everything. Look at verse 21. Heaven must receive him until the time uh, comes for God to restore everything. Everything is going to be made new again. Okay. Revelation tells us that there's a new heaven and a new earth and that uh, we are going to receive new bodies. And so all these things, all these these things that we see are broken will one day be made right and new. That's an assurance that we can have because of the resurrection. And then number five, the assurance that no evil can thwart God's plans. And thwart just means stop or, uh, yeah, put an end to. God's plans uh, uh, will continue, okay? And again, the, the, the assurance of the resurrection guarantees that. In fact, if we just look at the resurrection alone, Okay, what was, what was probably the most evil event that ever happened in all of human history? Where sinful man condemned the, their righteous creator to death on the cross. A wicked death, right? An innocent, even if he's not an innocent man, that alone would be evil. 
but he's not only an innocent man, he's the creator. Okay? And, and we condemned him to death because of our sins. That's, that's the most evil act you can think of. And if you think that, that evil things can thwart God's plans, just look at the resurrection. Because what do we see? It, it can't. Evil thought it had won. Uh, Satan thought he had obtained the victory. Uh, Jesus had been destroyed. Uh, no more of this worshiping God stuff. And then three days later, vindicated Jesus rose again. Okay, so no evil can thwart God's plans. Philippians 1, 6 is the reference there. Listen, what God has began, he will finish. We can be confident of that. And we see that in the resurrection. What God began, the work he began from eternity past to the bringing of his son uh, uh, was completed through the resurrection. What did Jesus say on the cross? It is finished, right? The work was done. Now God is going to continue to finish the rest of it, but we can be assured of that because of the resurrection. And then, oh, that was it. I thought I had one more, but I don't. So there's the five. We'll go over them again. We'll review them. If you didn't write them down, you can do it now. Uh, the death of death, number one, right? No longer as Christians do we need to fear death. Number two, God will judge every sin committed by us or against us. We can be confident of that. Okay, number three, God can deliver you from the power of sin. Okay, he can. Again, off 20 years on, I'm still struggling. There's times when I feel like, will I ever get victory over this? And the assurance I can have uh, because of the resurrection is yes, I can. I can. Uh, number four, God will restore and renew everything that is broken. We can be confident of that. All right. And number five, no evil can thwart God's plans. God's plans will happen. Okay, and even God uses the evil to accomplish his plans. Again, look at the resurrection and the crucifixion. God used evil man and their evil plans to crucify an innocent, uh, innocent creator to accomplish his plans. They didn't know they were accomplishing God's plans. They didn't know that that's what they were doing. They had no knowledge of that, but that's exactly what they were doing. They were fulfilling God's plans. And then let me close with this. Here's a quote uh, from John Piper. Maybe you've heard that name before. He's a pastor, a theologian, if you haven't. He says, so practically speaking, one thing you could say of Easter is that every day, the promises of God made to me to help me every minute of my life are secured by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because the resurrection vindicates the cross when those promises were brought for me. Okay, those those promises that God made throughout all of Scripture were purchased with the blood of Christ at the cross. And then his vindication at his resurrection guarantees that those promises are there for me every minute of every day. So as we continue to go through this process of, uh, I don't know, isolation, quarantining ourselves, whatever you want to call it, as we continue to go through this, uh, if you're struggling Remind yourself of the assurances that we have because of the resurrection. And as Easter approaches, I pray that these things will be on your mind uh, and that you would uh, take time in prayer to thank God for these things. He, he deserves the praise and the honor and the thanks uh, for what he's done. Okay, uh, You guys have a class coming up in 12 minutes, so I'm going to pray for us, and then you guys can do whatever you need to do to get ready for the rest of the day. Okay? Father, we thank you, we praise you that you are a God who is uh, in absolute control. And Lord, even when we feel absolutely out of control of our circumstances, we can rest in you and trust you. And Lord, as we look through the scripture, there are many assurances that we can have because of the resurrection. These are just a few. But we thank you, God, for the ones that we've gone over today and for all the ones even that we have. And I pray that these assurances would bring us comfort during difficult times, during trials and tribulations, that they would bring us peace of mind and that they would remind us that we can trust in you, that you are a faithful God who will accomplish all that you have planned and purpose to do. So we thank you that you are in control and that we are not. I ask that you would be with the students the rest of the day, help them to remain diligent in their studies, uh, give the teachers and the students strength and energy to continue on and we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys for joining us. 
and uh, hopefully see you guys again in two weeks.